Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to today's reddit quickie video. Taken from the HFY subreddit, the story is called Rules of War. Written by Bot99. The link to the original will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do so, please consider subscribing. Because if you don't, a biomass eating sentient cloud of nanites might be paying you a visit later. A crap, a crap, a crap, a crap. A woman shuffled frantically through her notes before breaking into a jog to catch up to her colleague as he strode down the corridor. Calm down, Jenkins, we knew that this was coming. The Garaxian modus operandi was well known. They were always going to declare war on us eventually. The man's voice was calm, but the distress he felt was obvious from the lines furrowing his brow and the tense stiffness of his gait. If we knew then, why didn't we do more to prepare? R&D is behind schedule, and Admiralty says that the new fleet is only 80% complete, and our attempts at establishing an interspecies alliance has been rebuffed by nearly all of the galactic neighbors. The Ovid are the only ones willing to stand with us, and that's because they're even worse off than we are. The pitch and the speed of her voice rose higher with every word until she had to stop to take a few gasping ragged breaths. A free hand fished around frantically in her coat pocket until it emerged holding an inhaler. She shoved the end into her mouth and breathed deeply. We're not ready for this. The ambassador Wu stopped walking and turned to face her. He placed his hand on her shoulder and stared her straight in the eyes in what he hoped was a steely gaze. You have to keep it together, Jenkins, because if you lose it, then I'm going to lose it, and if we both lose it, then then we're done. We're done. Humanity's done. Everything is done. He stopped himself when he realized the last few words had been shouted in panic, then saw the creases his white knuckle grasped of leaving on the shoulder of Jenkins's coat. He forced himself to let go and flexed his hand a few times, attempting to relax them before giving up and shoving them into his pockets. But what are you going to do? whined Jenkins as they halted outside of the conference room door. Muscles in Wu's jaw flexed visibly as he swallowed hard, trying to get rid of the acrid taste that had infiltrated his mouth. Facing the door, he straightened his tie and tried to put on his game face. We're going to do what humanity has always done best, Jenkins. We're going to wing it. Jenkins' reply died in her lips as Wu pressed the button and the door slid open. The conference room was unremarkable. Just a long table surrounded by four nondescript walls without windows, pretty standard for a Galactic Council space station. At each end of the room was a doorway on which they had entered through. At the other end of the table was the Garaxian ambassador, already waiting. Of course he arrived first. He wants to keep us off balance. This is just a cheap political theater, muttered Jenkins. He knew ahead of time that this would happen, replied Wu softly. That's one of the benefits of being the side declaring war, rather than the one reacting to it. Gravaxians were one of the more aggressive species in the Milky Way, and brazen bullies to boot. Fittingly, their bodies looked the part. The ambassador resembled a mole rat that had been surgically grafted onto the face of a spider crab, except that it was seven feet tall. They had an unsettling effect on most sapient species, and they definitely knew it, using it to their advantage at every opportunity. An unseen third door opened, and a mediator android entered the room. It took its place at the midpoint of the long table, equidistant from the two combatant species. At their end, Wu and Jenkins sat down in the human chairs provided, while the Garaxian was having no need for chairs, remaining standing at his end. The media commenced proceedings, its synthetic voice ringing out clearly in the galactic common. At 0 0.5 hours today, being the 10th segment of the 281st degree of galactic rotation, the Gravaxian Hive, represented here by Ambassador Thum, has made a declaration of war on the Terran Republic, citing a breakdown of negotiations in the ongoing trade talks. As per Article 49 of the Galactic Convention, we gather here at a neutral location to agree on the rules of war and allowed weapons. I, Gulf Ed Attributed Unit Designation 7-2, will act as a mediator for these discussions. The combatants will now declare their intent to deploy the armaments classed as exotic weapons. 
those being any such weapons not listed on the standard means of engagement, vowed in the Article 53, Subsection 6. The declared weapons will be added to the conflict-approved weapon list, henceforth reversed to as the cowl. Each combatant will be given three opportunities to veto any exotic weapons proposed by the opposing combatant. Once the combatant has exhausted their veto allocation, they'll have no further right to limitation of the cowl, save their natural rights to seek and destroy such exotic weapons during the course of hostilities. Use of exotic weapons not listed on the cowl, as agreed here today, shall result in a forfeiture of the Galactic Council membership and classification of the infringing combatant species as an enemy to the Council. Do you both agree to be bound by these rules? We do, said Ambassador Thum, his unpleasant voice sounding like he was constantly on the verge of expelling some kind of viscous broadly fluid. Don't have much to choice now, do we? said Wu sarcastically. Ambiguous statements are not permitted. A definitive answer is required, replied the mediator. We do, Wu grumbled, sinking deeper into his chair as he prepared himself for the onslaught of intimidation that was sure to follow. Satisfied by the response, the mediator continued. Gravaxians, as the declaring combatants, make go first, said the android. As is our right, replied Thum, drawing himself up to his full height. Get off your soapbox, that's what I just said, sneered Jenkins. The mediator turned to face her. It's disapproval, obvious, although it stops short of any further admonishment. Foolish humans! I will make your personal deaths a condition of your species' inevitable surrender. I look forward to eating both of you, growled Zoom. Jenkins flipped him the bird. Zoom bristled, having been on the receiving end of such a gesture once before. At the council gala dinner, he had told but particularly offensive anti-human joke to a collection of delegates said that Jenkins had reacted by embarrassing him with what he later learned was an offensive insult. Plasma weapons, class three and below, he declared without further preamble. Only class three? What's the matter? Are you afraid you're going to end up like boiled lobsters? Quipped you. Thumb's teeth made a grinding noise, his frustration at the immediate challenge obvious. Vine, class four and below, he said. The hell are you doing? whispered Jenkins urgently. We're meant to talk them down, not up. Wu made a subtle, placating gesture towards her, his eyes still facing forward. Just go with it. I have an idea, he replied. Agreed, declared Wu loudly, so that Zoom and the mediator could hear. Aerosolized neurotoxic gases, said Thum, a hint of sinister laughter following the statement. Since the chitinous shell rendered them nearly impervious to airborne toxins, the Gravaxians were almost immune to such gas weapons when wearing protective breathing gear. Soft-skinned humans, on the other hand, were not so lucky. It was obvious Thum was trying to get Wu to use up all his vetoes before he could get to the good stuff. Veto, Wu said immediately, one gone, two left. Thermonuclear explosions, both fission and fusion-based. He swore under his breath, Earth had long had a troublesome history with nuclear weapons and the radioactive fallout. Wu knew that the Republic's leaders didn't want to let that particular genie back out of the bottle any time soon, leaving him no choice but to object. Beto, two gone, one left. Thumbs chuckling intensified. Anti-matter explosions up to 100 megatons, said the monstrous diplomat. Wu grinned as his embryonic idea unfurled further within his mind. Only a hundred megatons! We had a little saying when I was serving in the Navy, Thum. If it's not at least a gigaton, then it's not worth dropping. What's the matter? Did your queen cut off your gamete sacks? Wu winced slightly as he felt Jenkins kick him under the table. He dug his heel into the top of a foot in an act of petty revenge. Ow! she blurted out. Thum and the mediator both turned to look at the sudden outburst. Jenkins' cheek quietly blushed pink with embarrassment. Is what you'll be saying when you wake up in the second sun in the sky, said Jenkins awkwardly. Jeez, nice recovery, Jenkins, Wu thought sarcastically. Then regarded them both silently for a moment. Withdrawn, he said coldly, but didn't immediately suggest an alternative. Wu could tell that Thum was thinking hard, mentally reviewing the armory that the Garaxians had been diligently developing for the last thousand years. That's your weakness, thought Wu. You're not creative enough. Finally, the Gravaxian looked up and locked eyes with him. Mind-controlled slave shock troops, he snarled, with a hint of victory in his voice. 
human revulsion at the concept of slavery was well known. Some knew the thought of fighting and killing their own captured citizens was unthinkable to all Terrans. Damn it! Vito, growled Wu, angry at the dirty trick Thum had used. Now all of his vetoes were gone. Edgy knew the Gravaxians had a whole slew of horrible weapons that hadn't been mentioned. Now that they would be able to free to use them at their leisure. <laughs> I've got you, Wu. You've run out of ready. Idiot Thum. He then turned to the mediator. The Gravaxian hive also reserves the rights to deploy autonomous hunter-killer drones, mech-mounted incendiary cannons, germ warfare and orbital kinetic projectile the bombardment. The mediator addressed them at once more. The Terran Republic has resourced its veto quota. Neurotoxins, thermonuclear explosions, and mind-controlled slave troops are hereby added to the list of prohibited weapons applicable to this conflict. The other nominated weapons are added to the cowl. The Terran Republic may now declare its intentions. Wu looked at the first list he had in front of him, made up of two columns. First column showed the weapons that the Republic already had, all which were in the final testing stages. The second showed still in research and development, but were expected to be ready in time to the short and medium term. Whether they would be ready in time to use in this war was anyone's guess. Time to play some poker. Antimatter explosions are one gigaton or greater, he said calmly. This is only a small bluff. The Republic had several antimatter bombs in the hundred megaton range. Surely the eggheads could just strap enough of them together to get a gigaton yield. Somewhere in the back of his mind, Wu heard the ethereal voices of thousand Terran engineers cursing at him. Vito, said Thum, gnashing his teeth in frustration. Terran Navy intelligence believed that the Gravaxians only had bombs up to 300 megatons. The veto indicated that they had been correct in that assumption. The aircraft mounted electric discharge lancers, said Wu. The lancers used arcs of electricity to mount holes in the ground-based armored vehicles. Gravaxians weren't big on the in-atmosphere air support, but they did have the pension for heavy vehicles. They would have been useful weapon for the Republic. If the R&D was finished, maybe Thum would take the bait and veto them. Agreed, said the opponent. Nuts, thought Wu. Oh well, it was worth a shot. Orbitly fired multiple independent targetable re-entry vehicles bearing chemical explosive payloads not exceeding one kiloton. Murs were nothing too special. Everyone in the galaxy had them, but Wu knew he needed to include some of the more conventional weapons in order to lay the groundwork for what was coming next. He couldn't just shovel bullcrap down Thrum's throat and not expect to get suspicious. Ha! Huh, that'll be a short war if that's the best you got, crackled Thum. Agreed. Oh yeah? Well, that's your stance in weaponized asteroids, replied Wu, trying to keep his voice from sounding too defensive. That stopped Thum's laughing. Asteroids were planet killers. Do not bluff me, Wu. Humans do not have the capabilities to accelerate asteroid-sized objects to sufficient velocity to for use in warfare, I said Thum skeptically. Care to bet your life on it? Thum thought about it for a moment. The idea had been around for a long time, but no species had yet to make it work. The Gravaxiums themselves had been trying for several decades, but a deployable technology was still a long way off. Ugh! Vito, he conceded. A wise decision, replied Wu. Laying it on a bit thick, aren't you? whispered Jenkins. Wu pretended to check the page of notes under one containing his list. Unfortunately, they were all blank. Although Thum didn't know that. Quiet, don't make him suspicious, Wu whispered back, trying to keep his lips from moving. He stopped playing with his notes and leaned back, trying to convey the air of nonchalance. Thum needed to believe that Wu thought that he was in control of the situation. Diamond monofilament anti-personnel net mines, declared Wu. That was the thing, right? He'd read about them in a book once. Probably a trashy sci-fi novel. Wu could see that this one scared Thum. Several species had managed to manufacture diamond monofilament, and it had proved to be incredibly sharp, capable of slicing through nearly anything. Gramaxian biology didn't really handle losing limbs very well. Their thick shells were hard to penetrate, but when they were, and they tended to bleed to death very quickly. These facts combined made a potential monofilament mine a terrifying concept to the Gravaxian ground troops. Beto said Thrum, eventually. He was starting to look rattled. That is it, thought Wu. Time to get swing off of the fences. 
Wu sometimes considered himself a bit of a gambling man, but this was a big bet, even for him. It was an all predicted on knowledge of the Gravaxians would not adapt to espionage. Their operatives tended to stand out like multi-species crowds, so spying and infiltrating wasn't really an option, and their bullying ways had made so hated around the galaxy, few species were willing to exchange information with them. They had always tended to adopt a brute force approach because they were so unskilled in subtlety yet all intrigue. This was why Wu hoped their knowledge of Terran technology was limited, and that bluff might work. Go big, or go home. It was one of Wu's personal mantras. He put on the most relaxed and confident voice that he could muster. Luckily, Thum couldn't see how much his palms were sweating. Okay, with the unpleasantries out of the way, let's get down to the fun stuff. The Terran Republic asserts its rights to deploy the following exotic weapons, as per article whatever. He paused for dramatic effect. Depleted uranium projectiles. Real. Railgun rifles. Real. Ship-mounted particle cannons. Sort of real. Phased electron projectors, fakeish, still several years away at least. Neutron splitters, fake. Out of the corner of his eye, Wu noticed that Jenkins had stopped moving completely. Even her nervous ticks had ceased as the locked solid fear of the audacious bluffers backfire. Quark nuggets, super fake. Wu thought he was on to a good thing and decided to keep going with the subatomics. Cycled proton erasers, super duper fake. Higgs boson attenuators. Wu could see Thum frantically tapping on his data pad, trying to pull up any information he could to confirm or deny the existence of these surely galaxy-destroying munitions. Anti-anti-positron destabilizer containment fields. Nonsense words were just tumbling out of his mouth now, but he could see it was working. And lastly, mound glown pion combobulators. Phew, that one's a mouthful. Wu nodded at the mediator, who stood up to speak once more. The Gravaxian Hive has exhausted their veto quota. Antimatter explosives, weaponized asteroids, and diamond monofilament antipersonnel mines are hereby added to the list of prohibited weapons. The other, many and varied nominated weapons are added to the cowl. It is my declaration as acting mediator that the cowl is now finalized and binding and wait! The thumb shouted. Yes, Ambassador, said the mediator. Do you wish to say something before we close proceedings? Gravaxians couldn't quite sweat, but they did exude an oily substance from their joints when under extreme duress. Thum was glistening like a honey-glazed lamb. Perhaps we've been a bit hasty in our declaration. I would hate to see two such upstanding species such as ourselves engaged in the grubby business of interstellar warfare. Let's take another look at the trade agreement, shall we? I think I can see where we can make some concessions. Thum's voice seemed to have gone up an octave. How gracious of you, Ambassador Thum. I'd be delighted to reopen the negotiations and avoid the ugly mess, replied Wu. His voice saccharine sweet. Good, good. I'll have my office set up a meeting, said Thum as he rapidly packed up his belongings. Thank you, Mediator, but your services are no longer required. The Gravaxian Hive officially rescinds its declaration of war. Good day to you all. And with that he swiftly exited the conference room and could be seen breaking into a run before the automatic door even closed. A long, drawn-out sigh escaped from Jenkins as she relaxed in a state of extreme tension. You did it! You actually did it! she cried. Elation flooded Wu's mind and body as he absorbed the sudden change of their fortunes and that of the Terran Republic. He bowed to the mediator and quickly extradited Jenkins and himself from the conference room in the corridor beyond. Then a harsh realization hit him. Jenkins, he said. She was distracted already drafting a triumphant communication the way that they could send back to Earth. Yeah, what? She replied, not looking up. Get R&D on the phone and tell them they may have an open up a few new lines of research. That trick won't work a second time. End of story. If you wish to support the author or the channel, all the relevant links are down below. But the easiest way would be to share this like a plague to everyone and anything that you can think of. And until the next video, I hope that you all have a good time, and I'll see you then. Cheers.